Hello, and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name's Chris Kenneberg, and I'm from Dearborn Public Schools. We are a K-12 uh, public school district in Dearborn, Michigan. And um, kind of what we've done is we started with uh, a simple premise of how do we get students to log in and to learning as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And um, so that kind of started our, our journey on a deliberate and thoughtful implementation of Moodle. Um, a lot of times in K-12, um, what ends up happening is they install Moodle and, and then they turn it over to the teachers. And so what we tried to do was come up with almost like a recipe. And um, so I'm gonna share a little bit of that process and uh, we're gonna take 10 years of, of that process and try to whittle it down to about 10 minutes. And, um, okay, so we set out to have some expectations. And what we did was we tried to start defining like some pathways. So we, we were, had a lot of discussion about what it is that we want the user to see and do when they reach our site once, once uh, they reach our site, how do they access the learning materials? And so we set out to look at a whole bunch of things. And, and this was about the time of Moodle 2.7. And so prior to that, um, you know, I haven't, I, I, ne I had never written a line of code. And so um, with Moodle 2.7, um, my boss, uh, Troy Patterson, who's with us here today, um, he said, you know, we, 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 we want to use Moodle, but we have to make it intuitive for our users. Um, there's too many distractions on the homepage, um, and we really need to focus it down so that, you know, we can go back to that core uh, slogan that we have from login to learning. How do we get the kids there quickly as possible? So, um, what we did was we had our first attempt during the release of Moodle 2.7, and uh, this is kind of what we came up with. We said, when they reach our Moodle site, um, we're not going to have all these blocks and three columns and all these distractions, which lead people away from what we're actually there for, which is to get them into a, a class. And at K-12, that's very difficult if you have a five-year-old to get them from the homepage to the teacher's course. So um, what we said was when they reach our site, we want them to log in so that we know who they are. And, and then what we did was we said three columns is a bit much for elementary kids. There's too much going on. There's too much of a cognitive load there for them. So what we wanted to do was Basically, this was the start of looking at designing a theme um, because we wanted to eliminate that third column. Um, and also, when they got there, we didn't want them to do anything other than log in. So our first attempt uh, was this, and that was the home, home page. And as you can see, the only thing they could do was log in. Um, they couldn't get around that. We, and um, you know that's the Detroit skyline there. Um, and then once they entered the course, again, we went with two columns and we introduced the concept of uh, this icon navigation because we wanted the homepage to be the traffic cop to say, you know, you can go here, you can go here, and this is what you do. So we really kind of stripped down that initial homepage, and we learned a lot of things. Um, and then, you know, so we got some feedback coming in from the Moodle community, as well as our teachers and uh, some of the students. And what we were hearing was they wanted some more enhancements done to the menus. Um, so. Around the time of Moodle 2.9, we entered in a period of a lot of experimentation. 
So <laughs> um, the second attempt was uh, we focused on the same goals that we had for, for our first attempt, but we wanted to improve the navigation. Um, and we wanted to look at user experience more. And so what we tried to do were little things like, for instance, um, a lot of our teachers have many, many topics in their course. And when they scroll down the page and they realize that they wanted to add another resource, they had to scroll all the way back up, click the editing button, and then scroll all the way back down to add that resource. So we did things like the um, turn editing on button. We, we, it's location aware. So when the teacher clicked it, it was always visible on the page. And when the teacher clicked it, it returned them to that same spot on the page. And it was about this time that we really started to dive into a lot of uh, PHP coding, things that I didn't really know a whole lot about. Um, and we, we were lucky enough that there was this awesome Moodle community out there. And some of the people like uh, Richard Ullman, um, Gareth Bernard, um, Mary Evans, um, lots of uh, Emma Richardson, lots of people that were in the Moodle forums kind of helped us through this process. So when we talked about customization and user experience, we did things like adding, you know, like a header image. We did a lot of things with um, um, moving the navigations around. And some of the other things that we did were like, for instance, course completion or activity completion. We wanted that readily visible and built in in a visual way to the theme. And so in the upper corner, we did a little radial that would display to the end user, those kinds of things. There was also a little orange button that would show the user their grade, so it would slide down and show them their grade. So this was a lot of experimentation that we were doing um, with different elements of uh, bootstrap and, and those kinds of things, and really kind of just learning about how to better present these things to our end users. And then Moodle did something really, really good. Um, during uh, Moodle 3.2, they released the Boost theme. And that was like a game changer for us because we had really wanted a two column, a very clean, minimal theme. And, um, and that really jump started our development cycle. Um, our, my, my boss, uh, he kind of, over the, the couple of years that we had been working on this, he was bringing more people into um, our department, and uh, we had some other uh, people that could also uh, you know, help develop and, and write code. And so we did, we focused on three things. Uh, the theme, we created an enrollment plugin, and then we also built a secure Chromebook app that would allow us, you know, it kind of helps teachers when they give out a test to know that, that, that the kids aren't cheating. Um, and then we did a lot with the Boost theme, um, holding true to like the login. When they come to our homepage, we want them to log in to get into the course. And as you can see, um, all of our themes, it's kind of like a, a calling card for our themes. We have that icon navigation because we want the students to go to just certain places. But you'll also notice in this um, picture, we added the enrollment code. Uh, that was a new plugin that was developed because, uh, again, to get kids from login to learning as quickly as possible. What we did was uh, we mimicked Google Classroom. Uh, they do enrollment really, really well when you have a lot of, you, you know, it's not programmed like a college where you pay and, and you get in. Um, our courses, uh, things kind of pop up, and we need ways to get kids right from the homepage into the class. So the way that our plugin works is it, they type in a six-digit code, they click the Enroll button, and they are, present, they are enrolled in the course. And um, so 
so that was, uh, you know, kind of how we came up with, with a better way to get the kids into um, the courses. The other thing that we did was we consolidated all of the menus. Um, we moved them into the upper corner and we made them little icons that have like, when you roll over them, they, they tell you what they are. Um, but we wanted, if, if we get lost, we tell them look up. Um, kind of like a DTE commercial. Um, you know, when, when you see a down power line, look up, that kind of thing. Um, so we put all of the menus in the upper left. And what they, the menus do is the first one that you click, if you're a teacher, you get a teacher dashboard. And this goes back to getting feedback from our teachers. They were saying that uh, when they were in their course and in the Boost theme, they introduced the little um, the editing cog. And it really threw them for a loop when they left the home page and the menu changed. And so what we wanted was one button that kind of laid out and organized the menu for them. Um, that drop down, some of the things have like little sub menus. And so what we did was we laid it all out in a flat panel for them. And no matter where they are in their course, when they click that button, this panel pops up and it allows them to go uh, from place to place. The next button in our theme um, is, again, related to the easy enrollment plugin. And what that does is, um, you know, with the integration, um, when, when our theme recognizes that the plugin is installed on your system, it, it displays the, the, the button and it generates, auto generates the codes for the, the teacher and uh, whether they give them a group code or just the course code, um, it will you know, put them into the proper place in the course. Um, the one thing that I did not mention was, um, again, we deal with little kids and um, a lot of times they open up the Chromebook and it's about all the patience the teacher has just to get them to log in with a username and a password. And so once they're in the, the Moodle system, um, what we did was we utilized QR codes. So the teacher can print out a QR code and the student can click the little button to the left of the enrollment code and it pops up the webcam. And the teacher can walk by and just kind of scan a piece of paper and it puts them into the course. Uh, so whether they use the six digit code or the QR code, um, that was um, kind of our solution to get them from the homepage right into a course. And then um, again, once they're in the course, we um, remove the blocks. Uh, we, we like the blocks, um, but we did not want them always visible. And uh, so what we did is in the upper right corner, we have a course blocks. And again, from the previous theme, when we were experimenting with different uh, user interfaces and, and different things that you can do, uh, we utilized that gradebook slider uh, that would drop down. And that's exactly what uh, we did with the blocks. So the teacher or the student can click the blocks. They slide down. The teacher now has three columns to work with. And um, we, we thought that that was a, a little bit better um, uh, interface. And so um, I guess at this point, we would uh, open it up to uh, any questions. I saw a, a queue over there. I'm just going to come and share the stage with you, Chris. And um, just while the mic's getting ready there, and if anyone's got any questions, I used to be director of e-learning of a 3 to 19 academy. And I would have killed for a lot of this stuff. I mean, in terms of just getting kids to be able to log in when they're, you know, between five and seven years old, it's such a hassle. And as you say, a whole lesson can go by. So mm -hmm. it's a great work. Does anyone have a question for Chris? Just raise your hand and someone will come around with a microphone for you. There's a question here, please, if someone's got a mic. And I'll point out is uh, after the session, they said that the PowerPoints would be released. We do have some videos that kind of demonstrate some of this, but I, we're, we're short on time here. Hi, Chris. Um, the, 
the QR enrollment, that's really, really cool. Is there, is there an equivalent QR login um, idea or, or plan, or what did, you, what did you think about that? I, I wish, but not at this point. <laughs> Any other questions for Chris? Okay, well, thank you very much, Chris Kennyberg.